have known that off by heart, wouldn't we? But we rely on these screens so much. Um, we're going to sing verse two of the Advent song that we started last week uh, with Deacon Al. And so it's verse two of that today. If you could respond to the words in bold, please. It's Advent, not yet Christmas. It's not just the time for me and you to prepare, but it's time for all the world's different people to prepare. From East and West, North and South, together as one human family. How do we welcome and receive people who seem different to us? When God reigns, there is room for difference. How do we see the prophecies that arise from different cultures? When God reigns, there is room for difference. How do we understand a message from someone we don't expect? When God reigns, there is room for difference. How would we welcome amongst us the John the Baptist with camel hair and leather belt? When God reigns, there is room for difference. How do we see God's message beyond our circle of family and friends? When God reigns, there is room for difference. How do we live in harmony, in peace and love with people who are different from us? When God reigns, there is room for difference. We lit our first candle for you and me. Let us light the second candle for people who are different from us as we watch and wait. So, Edward. I know George doesn't want to say anything. Do you want to light a candle? Do you want to light a candle? Oh, Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, this Advent season, our Advent candle lighting liturgy has come from the Methodist Church and their source, which is called There Is Room. So I've given a, a leaflet, some of you have a leaflet, which is exploring more of the theme. And there are a couple extra out as you go through that way today, if you haven't picked one up. There is room in the Christmas story for you, me, us, all. When we lit our first candle last week, it was the words, it is for you and me, as we watch and wait. This week, the words are for people who are different to us, as we watch and wait. And that's what we're going to explore a little more of today. But first of all, we're going to sing. And if you would like to bring, if you haven't already, if you'd like to bring any gifts forward uh, during the hymn, uh, these are all for Jewsbury Pairs Community Group and their Christmas Day event. 
If you're, you have a monetary donation, there is a, you'll see a little box there if you'd like to put that in instead of, uh, of, get, of actual items. It's quite, everything is welcome. So let's sing, make way, make way. Shall we pray? Holy One, we pray. As we point behind us, God of the past, who has fathered and mothered us, as we point in front, God of the future, who is always ahead of us, as we open our hands, God of the present, who is here in the midst of us, God of all time, we offer you our worship and praise. We gather in this moment, bringing with us joy and sadness from our past, hope and fear for our future, faith and doubt in the present. God of all time, you have seen our love and fear. You have seen our prejudice and acceptance. You can see our self-loathing and our kindness. God of all time and beyond time, help us always to trust in your love. As we look to the past, grant us wisdom and insight. As we look to the future, inspire us with, with vision and hope. As we live in the present, transform us with your love, which knows no limits. Amen. We'll unite our prayers together now as we say the Lord's Prayer.
Right, we can't have today without we mention football, can we really? So this is partly for the children. I don't know if they'd like to come a little closer. Um, don't have to, no. It's all right, I can throw a ball a long way, you'll be okay. Um, so are we all enjoying the World Cup? Are we all excited about tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of the adults are excited about tonight. Well, it, I'll just share with you that 10 years ago, the World Cup was held in South Africa. And at that time, there was a, a Belgium, a lady from Belgium, a photographer who decided she'd like to go around South Africa, uh, taking photos and talking to the people, trying to get an idea of how, how they felt, the sense of what they felt about football, because it was all going to be held in their country. And she saw lots of people and she talked to lots of people and she came across, now we made one of these in pilot, she came across this football. What do, what do you think to my football? Well, yeah, it looked a bit like a load of plastic bags. Well, it would, because that's what it is. But when we were learning about so it's Zambia, Joseph, Zambia, we, we learned that, that this is what they used to play with, Zambia, yeah, because in, in Africa, because they were so poor, they couldn't afford to, to buy any footballs. And actually, we used to play with this, because games like drop it and catch it, catching games, it didn't really hurt anybody. Do you want to catch it, Edward? Me! Well, you can, you can you throw, it to, throw it to George. Yeah, yeah, come, throw it. You come and stand here and he'll throw it to you. Oh, okay then. You'll throw it back. Are you ready? Oh, ooh. hey! <laughs> well done. So it, it is quite a useful kind of ball. Well, I've got another. This, this is this is my new ball because it's football time. I thought I'd um, thought I'd treat myself to a new ball. It's nice and it's clean, isn't it? So um, I like how clean it is. I, I could let you play with this one, but you might get it dirty. Yeah, I don't want. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about having. You might. You might hurt. You might damage it. No, no. I, I, I don't think I'll let you play with that ball. <laughs> Have to put it down though, because that's what this photographer, as she travelled around, so she took a photograph of a girl with the, with the ball. <laughs> I'm so interested in his listening rap play and he's forgotten to, there. Uh, that's a plastic bag ball, you see? It's real, that's what they played with. And both balls are great, aren't they, for, for people? It's nice if you've got a nice shiny ball, but it's also nice if you make a ball out of something that you can just enjoy and that you can play with. And she made this comment, she was called Jessica, the South Africa, uh, the Belgian photographer. She said, so many people have so much and yet they do so little with it. <laughs> so much and they do so little with it. The people I met had so little, sorry, people have so much and do so little with it. And the people that she met had so little yet managed to do so much with it. So the balls are different, but they both give hours of fun and enjoyment. There's room in the Christmas story for difference. So on Christmas day, when you get loads of toys, and not just the children, I'm sure all you adults will get loads of lovely gifts. We all need to remember the best gift of all, don't we? We need to remember that little baby Jesus. He was, he is the greatest gift. But it's not much use unless we use it. Jesus wants to be in all our hearts. Can we make room? <laughs> I'm not really so mean. <laughs> <laughs> and now we will sing again, Colours of Day Dawn Into the Mind, and uh, Offertory will be collected during this uh, hymn.
just remain standing if you can. And let's pray. We offer to you, Lord, the gifts we have before us today. Our gifts of money, our gifts of our hands and our feet who work for you in our community, and our Christmas gifts for Jewsbury Cares. We ask your blessing on all those Who will benefit from these gifts and give you thanks that we are joyful givers. As our children leave now for their own special time, we ask your blessing on them, Lord, and on their leaders. Amen. Thank you. I've lost my place, folks. I've turned my pages over and now it is. Thank you. It is you. I'm so glad about that. <laughs> The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, the branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash round his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious. Wow. Mm. So the gospel reading is taken from Matthew's gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. John the Baptist prepares the way. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt round his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, you brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. 
And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear the threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Hmm. Thanks be to God. Jesus and worship him. It probably seems a bit strange to talk about the wise men on the second Sunday in Advent. We usually save them till the end of the Christmas story and, and right on into Epiphany. But you see, they probably came from Persia, which is modern day Iran. They weren't Jewish like Jesus, Mary and Joseph. They were Magi, men who studied astrology. This was forbidden for Jews and for followers of Jesus. And yet God chose to write a message in the stars to these magi, and they responded to God's invitation. The Bethlehem stable has room for people of many religious and ethnic identities, even people who might not expect to find themselves there. In the passage that Sally just read from Isaiah, which there was quite a lot in that passage today, but we're just going to pick one little part of it. It said, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion will feed together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. Isaiah has put together animals that are natural enemies, predators with prey. Is it possible that Isaiah is using these animals in a poetic way as symbols of natural enemies that represent the hostilities that exist amongst people? That he's not saying that God will reconfigure all of nature so that no animal feeds on another. That he instead intends us to picture a world where people live at peace with each other. A world where there are no hostilities. Nothing that separates one person or tribe or nation from another. A world where people are able to acknowledge one another as friends, neighbours, brothers and sisters, a world where there is no longer any such thing as enemies. There is room in the Christmas story for us all. And we've just got a short video for you to watch now. Hi, I'm James, I'm the youth peasant for this year and welcome to my church in Clifton. And today I am going to be taking you through what neurodiversity is and how churches can help people like me. 
I am a person who lives with multiple near-death conditions, um, ADHD, autistic traits, and dyscalculia. Um, over my lifetime, I've had uh, multiple problems um, in mathematics. I can add and subtract reasonably fine, um, but ask me to divide or times, and I'm of no use to anyone. Um, in social situations, I am unable to read emotions or the meanings behind stuff. And there have also been positives, however. Um, I've been found to be creative, a good problem solver, and fantastic at literacy skills. Before we begin, it's important um, to explain what we mean by neurodiversity. Examples of neurodiverse conditions are attention deficit hyperactive disorder, um, autism, dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, dysgraphia, and Tourette's. There are multiple things churches can do to help people like me. And these are understand that our conditions and affect us and both negatively and positively in our everyday life, our home life, our work life and our church life and accept us for who we are. And sometimes our conditions um, need a little help along the way um, to be able, um, to be, um, to be able to do some tasks. And um, so if you um, um, could put out um, equipment without us having to ask, um, such as acetate um, overlays for dyslexia or uh, doing shorter sermons or interactive sermons even, um, it, would, uh, um, it would do a lot to help us um, to interact um, on a daily basis. Statistics show um, that people with neurodiverse conditions are more likely um, to, be, um, to be the victim of bullying and, for, uh, and what we need is a space for us to escape to and to be able to heal and, uh, and, and rebuild. Um, at the end of the day, our conditions um, affect us all slightly differently um, and, uh, 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 and we've spent our lifetimes and, build, uh, and building up coping mechanisms to be, uh, 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 and to be able to live with our conditions and to the bit and to the bit people who know how to support us is us. So don't be frightened to ask us for help. And these sorts of practices um, help us and they also help you. Helps us by creating um, an inclusive space where differences are celebrated and alterations are seen as a natural way of life. And helps you because we will be equipped and um, to interact more and give a fresh insight into the life of the church. Thank you for listening today, and we hope you found this information helpful, and it will definitely help and people like me. We're going to sing now. Praise to the God who clears the way. It's Singing the Faith, number 183. <coughs> Sure.
Our reading from Matthew is all about John the Baptist. So it was John first, preparing the way for Jesus. Once John had set the stage, Jesus would begin his ministry. First John, then Jesus. John began preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus followed shortly afterwards, preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. First John preaches repentance, then Jesus preaches repentance. John first, then Jesus. But even though John the Baptist was first in the sequence, he was never first in importance. John said of Jesus, I indeed baptize you in water for repentance, but he who comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. When I read about John and Jesus, one of the things that jumps out at me is the way that both men were doing what God had called them to do. They were operating according to a plan, God's plan. Another thing that jumps out is the fact that God's purpose was salvation. Both John and Jesus preached repentance, which is from the Greek word meaning metanoia, which has to do with turning your life around and going in a new direction. So how does that all fit in together with a video we've seen about and what we've been talking about earlier, making room, making room for us all, making room for those with a difference. The story of God holds together all people, all the world, even those of us who feel different. We believe that God created all things and therefore is a God of diversity and of creativ creativity. In God's vision of the world, all things exist in love, harmony and peace. And the good news is that we are all asked to take our place in that vision. Thanks be to God. Now let's pray. We'll have our prayers for others now. Uh, there is a, a response to this, which is one that you know very well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for this second Sunday in Advent. We praise you that we are approaching the celebration of the birth of your son, Jesus. Help us to focus and keep our focus on Jesus, not to be distracted by the buying of cards and presents. We turn away from our sins because we know that your kingdom is near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, your prophet Isaiah promised that he will judge the poor fairly and defend the rights of the helpless. We pray now for the poor in our land. We thank you for all those who give generously to food banks, and we pray that there will be enough food. We pray for the homeless, those living on the streets or in unsuitable accommodation. We pray for those living in fear of eviction. Give them all secure places to live their lives. We pray also for our politicians that they will make decisions that enable people to live, eat, and heat their homes without being forced to rely on charity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. John worked in the wilderness, baptizing people with water. We pray for people without safe drinking water. We ask that you will give strength to groups such as Christian Aid, Water Aid, who are working to provide access to safe water to those without it. We also pray for the victims of flooding. Some are far away in Pakistan and others nearer to us in Aberdeen. No matter where, we pray for your wisdom and guidance for all those attempting to help the victims. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All seeing God, 
Isaiah wrote about branches sprouting from a stump. We pray for your world where forests are being destroyed. We pray that all humankind will respect your world. We ask that the decisions made at COP, COP 27 will become actions. We must stop destroying what you created and we pray that politicians worldwide will see the need to act now. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Isaiah wrote that he will rule his people with justice and integrity. We pray for rulers. We pray for those who have led their countries to war and for those forced to mobilize troops to defend their peoples. We pray for Ukraine as winter has come and many people are without power. We ask for peace in that region and all other places where there is conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Paul wrote that it is so that all of you together may praise with one voice the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do praise you for being with us. We praise you for all that we have because we know it comes from you. And we praise you and we thank you for our very lives. Amen. We'll have our final hymn now, which is <clears throat> from Singing the Third, 186, Tell Out My Soul. <coughs> Amen. I hope you're all going to be singing that all day. Oh, apart from when you're at the Christmas sparkle <laughs> concert, of course, when they'll be entertaining you with lots of other things. We'll have our blessing. May the blessing of God, 
the source of all life, the source of all living, the source of all abundance, be with us today and always. Amen. Amen. And if you'd like to share the grace together, may the grace...